Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed your little break. Um, Who made popcorn? I can smell it. Wow, you're right. Hmm. Sounds good. They ought to drop some off with us. Um, I got all kinds of things here. Um, like, you know what? Here's something that bothers me. Okay. Uh, securities and exchange charges, ex McDonald's CEO with misleading investors because he was having sex with a McDonald's employee. Are we at the point now we're going to check people's bedrooms? I mean, probably. Now, granted, he was the president of McDonald's. But does that make him any less of a human? No. So, but if it was a mutually acceptable relationship, what the hell difference does it make? It's not news. That's what makes it anything right or wrong if it's news. Ah, uh, there's an old saying in the newspaper or news business or media electronic if it bleeds it leads. Yeah. If it's shocking or disturbing or titillating, it's going to make the news. And it's <laughs> going to make the news big time. Wow. So the Securities Exchange Commission fined this bozo $400,000. He yeah. paid it. Oh, well, to him, that's... Eh. Peanuts. Yeah. A good barbell. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 why? You're right. Uh, it's titillating. But why uh, do we get our neck in a knot over this? It just, I don't know. Well, see, I don't really, I don't think most of us do. But the media thinks we do. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And, they, of course, they force feed it to us. Yeah, that's all we so, see. Yeah. So but, we see what they consider to be the news. But, but watch, to bear that out, watch how fast a story will die. Boom. It's like somebody oh. shut off a light, yep. boom, and you never hear anything about it. Sure. You don't hear the outcome or anything because they've moved on to something else. President Biden the other day. Uh, created uh, a, a faux pas. He mistook the, us, a Salvation Army guy in uniform, mm -hmm. for being a Secret Service operative. Uh, you can't hear it all, but they showed it, mm -hmm. and they put captions down below. And one of the captions was, and of course my son Bo died in Iraq. Well, that entire clip is gone. Mm -hmm. um, I, this, part of me says, you know what? It's embarrassing for him. Maybe we're better off not knowing that kind of crap. But the other thing is, he's our president. It's, yeah. And he's getting confused over that. Uh, what worries me about the president, whether it had been Trump or or Biden or any of them, they call they carry the secret codes, the launch codes. That's a responsibility that's just unheard of. You know, if there's too many more instances like this, at some point in time. Someone is going to say the 25th Amendment, mm -hmm. and then the opposite party will start screaming, you've got to get him one way or the other, don't you, and all that, and you're just tiring him and ruining his reputation and all that, and the other side will combat that by pointing out terrible things, that is, and it'll be uh, Terrible, terrible mess. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see in 24 whether Trump and Biden are willing to put the country in peril.
for their own gain. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's Inter be, interesting it's is scary. Interesting. Scary. In exactly. Um, I have another thing. Here. I think you just saw some of that with that fiasco with the uh, uh, McCarthy yeah. Speaker of the House fiasco. He was willing to sacrifice the good of the country for his own personal power play. He, in fact, sold his soul. So he, he, that, that office now is a, a mere shadow of what it was. Yep. And there's so many things that he agreed to in there that will just throw things into turmoil just, just like that. Because I wanted to Because I there. want the power. And yet, most of the Senate agreed with him, except no. for the Freedom Caucus. Uh, and they're the, they're the stirrers, the That's pot right. stirrers. That's right. They're the old tea potty. Mm hmm Yep. The closer you get to the edge of the political spectrum, the worse the people are. Yep, that's right. So, there was an article in the paper, SWAT sticker spray painted on a Swampscott sidewalk. A what? A SWAT sticker okay. was spray painted on a Swampscott, Massachusetts sidewalk. So the police are investigating this insidious form of hate. You know, we talk about people overstating a situation. This was probably done by a dumb kid. I will give you 99.999% the some kid did that. And he Because he, he did knew... It. Who's going to get a rise out That's of it? That's right. I do that. He'll hey, tell his look friends. At that. Yeah, uh, look jumping at through that. hoops. Look at the channel four cameras yeah. here. Huh? And that kid probably couldn't define the word hate. Had no idea what None that is whatsoever. But yet, the press can. Yep. Or it was done by some drunken pothead that. Uh, Oh, well, uh, more likely a kid. But I, I, I go along with a punch drunk kid. If it was done in conjunction with a bunch of other things, that's right. Leaflets were spread out. Money was spent in making signs. Uh, rallies were held. Then you got a problem. Some kid spraying a, a swastika sign on the sidewalk and is you know totally what? different. You know what? If we invited that kid on our show and we said to him, what is the meaning of a SWAT sticker? Explain it to us. I know what he'd say. Something the Germans had. Yeah. So I think probably war. wouldn't even know that. Yeah, wouldn't even know that. Yeah. But we, I, I put SWAT stickers in everything when I was a kid. Yeah. We played Army. We didn't play. Oh, I know. Hot Cowboys well, and Indians. Because well, it was, World yeah. War Two. Yeah. Yeah. And we had old shirts, and some guys were the Germans, and they had swastikas on their shirts, and some guys had a, a, a star for the Americans, and then we'd go up in the woods, and we'd make forts, and we'd attack, and we'd... Yeah. I had a... Uh, I don't know how the hell I got it, but I had a M1 replica. Ooh. A training from the yeah. Army oh, made great. out of wood yep. with a metal... Yep. Um, works up top. Wasn't functional, couldn't fire anything, but it looked just like an M1. Well, you'd have been a big deal in our group. Oh, yeah. Days. And uh, we left it outside and it rotted and fell apart eventually. But One kid's father had a bandsaw and he used to take a piece of board and we'd cut out Tommy, yeah. Tommy, Tommy guns and rifles and 45s it was easy to make We did the, the same thing with the 45s. So yeah. we have a friend that had a bandsaw in the cellar, and he cut out 45s yeah. for us to play with. Yeah, it was just a piece of wood. Yeah, they were easy to make. Yeah, but they don't allow kids to do that anymore. No, no, no They no. don't allow kids to have fun anymore. No. Stay in the house and uh, uh, do something on your phone. Uh, 
on the computer or some stupid game or some something. Some kid not too long ago got sent to the principal's office and they called the police because he went like this to another kid. Did. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, that fingernail could fly oh. off and kill that kid. But, I mean, the parents got called, the police got called, uh, everything. And it was hate speech. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you, you know, I... So, some jerk did this. Oh, yeah. All right. And... If they catch him, and he says, I did it because I, I, I don't like them Jews. Well, so that's hate speech. Or that's a crime. How about a guy that kidnaps a 14-year-old girl, rapes her, and murders her? Mm -hmm. That's not a hate crime? Yeah. To take someone's life. You have to be consumed with hatred. You have to have a heart as black as the ace of spades. Oh yeah, but but that would that that's, that's not no. But some kid the spray paints a swastika. Well, that's hate. Well, that's what this, that's what the media sees as the norm, yeah. the hate norm or whatever you want to, and that's what they they yep. pound us with. Yep. And we buy it. That's that's the mm -hmm. problem. We buy these kind of ideas. Yeah. I I like to the argument um, against stop and frisk. Um, and stop and frisk for any of you folks who aren't up to date on police savvy. Um, it's stopping someone in the street who it looks like might be carrying a weapon, yep. and frisk them. And you know what? A lot of times they find well, illegal yeah, weapons. Yeah, because they got better stuff to do than just stopping some guy yeah. and frisking them. Yeah, but taking guns off the street. So that's bad because those kids with the guns are our children. It's, well, it's a, to put the things of, in perspective, they even make a fuss when somebody wants to put a surveillance camera up. You're violating somebody's privacy. When they go in and violate the rules of the store by not stealing, yeah. uh, by stealing. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so we should catch the bad guys, but if it invades their privacy, mm -hmm. that, that's, no, that's, no, no, that's a no-no. Yeah, something wrong. With we, we've all of we've this. got upside-down values on some of these things. I got something really that you're going to turn you on. I can't wait to read this. What is it? City to require closed captioning for what? Any bars or restaurants open to the public that show like sports or movies or yeah. whatever are going to be required to have closed captioning for the people who cannot hear. Most of them do it anyway, simply because you go into these places, it's so loud you couldn't tell, you see what the hell they're on TV. But to require it, that's just craziness. Uh, this is Michelle Wu. Because if, if you have a hearing problem and you're in there and they don't have it on, you can't hear it, go someplace that you can. It, it, uh, and, and this includes restaurants, bars, gyms, banks, and more that have public-facing television. They will need to turn on the rolling captions of what's being said that generally run along the bottom of the screen. Most of them do it now if they want to keep their they customers. So that's, no, that's, I don't you're know. absolutely right. But to make it, again, again, that's grandstanding. Yep. And this, by the way, uh, the Mayor Wu, this will also be beneficial to the general public as it increases access to information in crowded and noisy commercial spaces where it might be difficult to hear. How did we possibly live without that woman being there? I don't know how we could come up with that. that that's brilliant. 
Wow. Help me, Dwayne. Give me something to rave about. Why just, you just, how about Sal DeMasi? Yep. He's back. He's back. And the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Courts, said that he can be a lobbyist because he didn't violate state law. He violated federal law. So therefore, he's so honest and so loving and so... He's been uh, rehabilitated through well, this major upset. I can't life. understand why he's alive. He was on death's door With in cancer. prison. Yeah, I mean, his wife said he's not going to live the week. You got to let him out, for God's sake. Have some mercy on the poor man. He, now he looks fit enough to run the uh, marathon. Yeah, now he's a lobbyist. Oh, my God, did we get hoodwinked or did we get hoodwinked, as usual? We as got usual. usual. Yep. We got hoodwinked again. Well, when not are we that one up as a major When are we going to stop believing this malarkey stuff? Never. 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 No. Nope. No. Nope. We, we, we got to be the dumbest group in, a, in the whole damn country. I've told this story it. before. I'll tell it again. I had a boss over the Foxborough Company, one of my first bosses. Not the brightest guy in the world, but he was the boss of the packaging room. Yep. And he said to me, did you uh, watch Walt Disney last night on TV? I said, no, I didn't. Oh, he says, you missed a wonderful show. I want to ask you about this. Because um, you're Irish. I said, yeah. He said, have you ever seen a leprechaun? <laughs> I, um. I said, no, no. Oh, are they just in Ireland? I said, no. You're in South Boston, too. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as a leprechaun. I said, it, it's, it's a joke. A joke? He said, it's no joke. He said, Walt Disney wouldn't lie. <laughs> I know. Yes. I, and honest to God, he got as mad as oh, I yeah. ever saw that guy get. Yep. And I said, I got to go to the men's room or something. I don't know. I walked away. It's amazing. It is it truly, is amazing. truly amazing. Yeah. People believe stuff on TV. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with Sal, how about the tea driver that got acquitted? He takes his trolley and rams it into the back of another trolley, tells the police at that time, I don't know what happened. I was sleeping. And they found him not negligible. He was not responsible because he was sleeping. Well, is that? Now, here's the best part. The past seven years, he's been suspended six times. Six times, folks. Suspended out of seven years. Would you hop on a trolley with that guy? That guy? guy? What, are, what is the matter with us? What is the matter with that MBTA group or the control it's group? It's called... Power of the Union. That's right, in patronage. Six times he's suspended. And this time he's acquitted because, well, it wasn't his fault he fell asleep. You know, he was maybe working two jobs. Yeah, well. Supporting his family. And, and, and it was, but we're not sure he fell asleep. He's not sure. He might have blacked out. It might have been a medical condition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the six other times? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And also speeding. Uh, I mean, he, what is, did he get written up for like 67 miles an hour? Something in a 10 miles zone or yeah, something. Yeah, or right? some. Uh, well, he's sleeping. He don't yeah. know what's going on. He's got just whoopee, here we go. How about all the people who got hurt in that accident? People get hurt a lot in accidents like that because it's all of a sudden, oh my God, my neck, my neck, my back. Because it's, you know what that is. Yep. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Big time. Yeah. Yep. We were, we were in an elevator one time, Atlantic City, in one of the casinos. Came down to the main floor and it stopped. It stopped this far from the floor. But the door wouldn't open up then, of course. So the buzzer rings and a couple of guys show up 
and they got this thing and they get the door open. They said, all right, now they held you by the hand. You said, Bill, it was this far, this far. There were two people. Their neck was broken, their back was broken. Nobody had any. There wasn't any abrupt. No junk, no, no. jolt, no nothing. It was just it came just to just a stopped. So, gee, gee. Yeah, but it missed its mark. It missed the mark. Wow. Ambulance had to came. Stretchers taking these two out. And it was a man and a wife. Or, you know, and, yeah. And I, boy, I could sing they run tonight in this yep. casino. Do you want us to call your doctor? No, but call our lawyer, please. Call our lawyer. Yeah. That's right. I think they were already <laughs> hollering about a lawyer. <laughs> what a country. What a country. Have. That's right. What a country. And we wonder why our insurance rates are high. Oh, my God, yes. That's... You were lucky they weren't traveling over Christmas, huh? See all the horror stories out there with the... And then yesterday they repeated again. Shut down, a, shut down the whole ground. Uh, with a national yeah. ground stop. But that, that brings us to another thing. We've got to stop appointing these people in head offices that don't know what the hell they're doing. Every time we got an administration change, all these heads, they all change. Oh, absolutely. Uh, FAA from this administration is not the same one from that one and the one before that. You don't, they don't have any experience mostly in these people. They're just, they're pol politicians and they know somebody. Friends of the winner. That's right. That's what, exactly what it is. And this is what we get. This is what this state has. This is what nationally has. It, it's, we do things over and over and over. And it's like you said with, with Einstein. Yep. And we expect something different, but we don't get anything different. We get the same old result that we always got. Yep, absolutely. Uh, because we're not changing how we do things. Nope. We're repeating it over and over and over and over, and expecting another result. It doesn't happen. FAA is so slow to make any changes on anything. You know what's really scary is you were talking this morning about how antiquated the equipment some is. of their processes yeah. are. And th not only did the ground stoppage system fail, the backup to it, it failed, failed, too. Yep. Now, gee, that really makes you feel comfortable, doesn't it? No. We have the best system in the world, I, I guess. We haven't had, I hate to say this, we've been accident free been very lucky for worldwide actually yeah i think i want to say um well it's well, been a long time I since think, we've had an air disaster i think the buffalo yeah I think uh, you're commuter right. plane the uh, icing thing when she put it in the yeah yeah that was uh that was 10 12 years mm -hmm. ago that was quite a while ago it was but, um and buffalo airport's not a pleasure Fly no, into no, 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 no. and it was a rainy night, icing, icing, uh, icing yeah. problems, and they didn't know. Uh, uh, she pushed the lever down and should have been pulling it up, or vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah. Uh, she's losing altitude, so she tried to go up. Well, that made mm. her stall. That's so just the opposite. You want to go down, increase your airspeed, and then go up. Yep. But it was a panic situation. Well, because she had never had any background. No. She learned uh, flying in a fly-by yeah, uh, well, by school. yourself school yeah. and uh, had no experience and uh, was thrust in the, to a communal line as a co-pilot. Yep. The pilot wasn't any better. He wasn't any better, yeah. No. And that's what's flying us around, you know? It's scary. It's bizarre world. Yeah, it is. But, 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 oh, how about George Santos? How about that? Oh, my God, huh? I, you think you can't get any weirder, offbeat, crazy characters? Along comes George Santos out of New York. He can tell the truth. If you, if you ask him how many feet he had, he, he, he'd die until you had three. Yeah. And he stupid lies. It is absolutely incredible. And, and he's probably been very successful all his life as a liar. Absolutely. That got him... Yep. Got him by all the time. Yep. 
school, employment, the Holocaust descended. Yeah. What else? Was oh, the fact that he was Jewish. Yeah. I mean, it just goes on and on. Well, then his excuse. Well, his his grandmother was Jewish. Oh. I said a Jewish. It's a Jew with a with a uh, hyphen in the middle. Is this anything like the Indian princess? Yes, this is a what came right I, said, I said, oh, we just got another Pocahontas here. Well, he carried it on to extremes. Well, her putting it on all kinds of applications yeah, was pretty, pretty damn extreme, extreme too. too uh, for a one-time era. At least she went to school and she did this. No, it, it, I, everybody sweetens their resume a little bit. You know, you may have graduated in the top 3% and you say 2%. Or, you know, it, it's all kinds of stuff. And, uh, uh, Resume reviewers know which is the BS and which is just fluff and which is real. But what you don't do is say, I went to these two schools and never went there. Because chances are, if you put down a school you went to but you never graduated, all they'll say, did George go there? Yep, we got him here. Okay. Because they don't want to, today you don't want to get into saying bad anything, you get sued. Employment, the same thing. Even if you, you you weren't a good employee, but you worked there for a week, they all they'll tell you, yeah, he he worked here. Yeah. Boom, that's it. Yeah. But oh no, he's got to be specific. He's got to. He's so damn dumb. I. But here's the thing. The people that do that I are think, emboldened I think, by the fact that they can get away with it. He's. I think he's got a, a mental problem. Of some type, it, you know. I, I'm. I've been away from it for a while, the corporate world for twenty something years. Um, but to me, the biggest waste of space was human resources. Resource. Yeah, the they, HR guys. They be, they became that way. They um, just they're they're like, they're like see no evil. Hear no evil, speak no evil. Mm -hmm. You try to get an answer out of an HR guy. Yeah, right. I mean, they just, to a, to a man, were pompous bozos, I guess. I don't know. But they, as a national sales manager, one job, I got used to get a lot of calls from previous salesmen that were applying for other things. And I, I would say I wasn't getting involved in the details that they wanted. I said, yeah, he worked here from so-and-so to so-and-so, and that's... Um, and that, well, that's what the HR people tell the people mm -hmm. that are in your position, that that's what you have to say. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, I wasn't going to get involved in no. a legal fight over... I mean, you need to get sued like you need a hole. These head. guys were the biggest eight holes you ever ran across. Yeah. I had to fire a kid one day. By the way, he lasted one day. Now, I'm going way back, he, and he wore a ball cap, because we don't wear hats inside. Mm -hmm. Take it off. I walked away, right back on again, went over, I said, we got a problem here. I said, I told you to take the hat off. It's against the rules in here. Now, Take it off and leave it off. So this played out it's, uh, that day. I had to go. I went by him three or four times and had to go in. So he put the hat or back off again, put it on mm -hmm. the table. Um, so at the end of the day, I fired him. I said, it. I said, come with me. You know, uh, and turned him over to personnel and told him why. And, Unable yep. to adapt to our regulations here. Yep. If he can't, if he, this kind of individual is, he's going to fight you on that. Yep. He's going to fight you on the big Everything things. Else. Everything else. Everything. Yep. Yes. Yep. I'm sure that when they got a call that uh, HR said, yeah, he did. He worked here. Yeah. And that would be it. They, they, yeah. They weren't going to get involved in that. Tate, Tate going to get into the whys and wherefores. Yep. Unbelievable. HR has got had to change because of the, so much of the 
the Me Too movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, the, the PC movement, all affected their, their function. And the woke. And the woke, uh, all, all of them, all, all that, of all that, that stuff. Big ball of yeah. wax, yeah. And they all of a sudden got themselves into, you know, HR used to be, did the paychecks come out on time? Uh, you know, did you record my vacation or how many days do I have coming? How many sick days do I got? And they had all this kind of stuff. Today, that's just a minor function with yeah. them. They got to get involved with this regulation and that regulation. And this report, Femuses how many minorities is, do we have? How yeah. many women do we employ? How many yeah. people of Asian descent? How many people of African descent? All these kind of studies they but, have to do over and over. But how can we do that when we, we can't ask a person's gender? I, I do, that's a good question. Mm. They're supposed to. They're supposed to know that, though, because mm. what a country would become. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, another. Uh, we had another um, referee punched by a high school basketball player. Was this the one in uh, XL High School um, in Cohasset? Cohasset. Okay. That, okay. 16-year-old male uh, punched a uh, official. Yep. Punched him in the face. So, um, the big qu question there is what's going to be the consequences? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is a um, co Cohasset, town of Cohasset school. Mm -hmm. So, there may be some consequences. Uh, probably not, but if this had been a private school, well, the gamut's out wide mm -hmm. from nothing to you're out of here. Yeah, uh, but uh, by the very, the very least, that kid should not ever touch high school sports no. again. No. The very, very least. And if he's too young to prosecute legally, He's not too young to be given a couple hundred hours of community service. There you go. You're absolutely right. Um, but, well, that would make him feel It'd Make icky. him feel bad. Yeah. He'd be different now. Yeah. Um, well, going from frivolous stuff to important stuff. All right. Prince Harry, it says, oh, violates... I Unspoken uh, military code. I, I, I'm a troublemaker sometimes, especially at home. I call him Prince Harvey. Har it's Harry. Oh, okay. And then yeah. a couple of minutes later, I say, well, what's Harvey? I told you, it's Harry. Um, so, now, I'm not sure there's a military code any place that says, it's unspoken if it is. That you don't talk about the people you killed. It's, that's that's unspoken. It's, yeah. it's just not done. But because usually if you do, you didn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's why every time that guy that killed Osama bin Laden comes on TV, I shut it off. Yeah. I mean, so he murdered somebody. It wasn't in a combat condition. He just shot him. I had when I came back, and I had the. Youngstown resident office. I got a, a I call them, I call, I don't know what they were called. They, we, you were either an agent or you were an analyst or you were a cleric. And he was a cleric that got to be an analyst. Oh boy. And he'd been around for a while. And I think he was an E6. Yeah, he, in fact, he was. And he is from Massachusetts, too, out in the western part of the state. Staff sergeant. Yeah. And he came back from Vietnam, and he started, he told these stories about the, the Viet Cong that he killed and how he did it and all that stuff. His name was Bill. No relation to you, obviously. But. Who knows? Uh, I said, stop it. I said, there's three of us that have been there. You know, prior year or two before you were, you didn't do stuff like that. We're not kids in school that you can tell these stories. I don't care if you want to make them up and tell your kids or your wife or something, but don't tell them in here because 
You look like a fool. Said, oh, he said, oh, no, I did that, I did that. I says, first of all, you'd be up for war crimes if yeah. you did. Yeah. Oh, he well, had one guy and he pushed, squeezed him to death with a Jeep up against a wall because he wouldn't talk. I said, you weren't doing any interrogations as an analyst there anyway. I said, you had a piece of paper in front of you that you had to analyze to see what, what does this mean anything? Or, you know, that's, it was a desk job. But he could not, not tell the truth or not tell the truth. Or if you told him, you gave him a pen, if he had a pen, he said, well, this pen writes not. I've got a pen that can fly. You know, and he'd have a pen that just, he would have anything that you said. He had something bigger and better. And I used to say, it was, get the whole group would get together sometimes, and he was like that. My wife said, how does his wife stand him? Because he never stops. And he wasn't being funny. Some people, these people do it to get a laugh, but they, he was serious. Yeah, um, you hear stories, and um, not necessarily about Vietnam or Germany or... Um, any place else, but you know, stories about things happening. And, and you say to yourself, I was there. I didn't see this happen. Yeah, I didn't. What happened? Yeah. I was there. Uh, uh, what, what, what was this all about? We didn't do that. Uh, but the, I don't know. I, I don't understand why. Someone has to lie to somebody else. I don't either. It, it's. No. I mean, look. If you if you don't want to tell the truth because you don't want to embarrass the guy, mm -hmm. or because the guy probably couldn't handle what you were going to say, that's one thing. Find a way around it, but not to these self-aggrandizing statements where yeah. you know a, a, a Superman used to come to me for strength training. Ah, oh, I know. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Harry um, has talked before about his combat experience, saying near the end of his tour in 2013, if there's people trying to do bad stuff to our guys, then we'll take them out of the game. And people are criticizing, you know, that kind of language. Um, and one of the... Um, Royal Marine veterans who knows Harry from his military days told Sky News he's already got a target on his back more so than anyone else. That's right. And you know what? When you get a guy like that that blows things out of proportion, mm -hmm. well, he's got a target on his back and people want oh. to see him get his come up on so He's going to appeal to some nut someplace that's going to try to take him out. Yep. Um, Harry has described his time in the Army as the happiest of his life because it let him be one of the guys rather than a prince. You know, there may be a but, modicum uh, of truth in that. I was just going to say there may be, that may yeah. be something that, that really means something. Because i got to believe that being a prince day in and day out gets damn tiring. It's interesting to look at Queen Elizabeth's life and see the amount of time every day she spent on service to England, mm -hmm. going to this post office, going to this building that opened up, going to this class play yeah. that uh, she because she took being a royal seriously. Mm -hmm. Which she did. That was her job. That's it was right. a life of service to the country that she loved. This worm, I, I <clears throat> this prince, I don't think quite feels the same way. No, he doesn't. I don't and think he not. is not going to subject himself to a life of service. He is not going to go to a uh, tier five uh, soccer match yeah. 
a playoff between two little villages, um, even though they've requested, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of things that the royal family does. Yeah. But he didn't want any part of it. All right. But he's so, sure promoting himself. Yeah. But, but So walk away from it. Okay. Yeah. He walked away from it. Now he says to himself, I'm going to make some money. Yeah. That, that we talked about we at home the other night when we watched uh, 60 Minutes with, uh, who was it? Anderson Cooper, who had him yeah. on for a good about 20, 25 minutes of it. And I said, here's a guy that, that so wanted to get away from the royals, and the royal this and the royal that and the royal that. And what is he doing? He's here talking about being the royals. Then he was on one of them women talk shows the next day. He was on uh, the late night show the following day. I said, good God, he's everywhere talking about being a royal. If he really wanted to divorce himself from that, he would have just got a house someplace and walked away from it. And walked away from yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, just lived the regular you and I type life. Yeah. Of course he could have a nice house, but he could, a nice house within nice houses, you're not going to draw any attention. No. He could have gone to his grandmother. Yeah. And oh, said, that's true. you know, oh. this life's not for me. Um, how about pensioning me off? Mm -hmm. Okay. And just letting me go and live my life, and I'll, I'll do it quietly. Yeah. There won't be any waves. But oh that's no, what, that's no. how reasonable people would do it. Yep. Instead, he's out shilling a book. Yep. I saw it that uh, Tuesday. I went to BJ's. They had a couple big stacks of them. Yeah. I wasn't tempted to buy it for sixteen ninety nine. It was yeah fifty percent off. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, list was thirty four bucks. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I uh, probably won't invest in it either. Uh, I've, I've read enough up, of the excerpts. library opens up, I'll put my name on it, and if they get it, they get it. There you go. Know, there you go. Yeah. Um, well, while you're looking, yeah, please. Biogen's in the moves again. Ah, okay. For several things. Were there their new uh, Adulham, ADU? L H E M, the new brand or uh, Alzheimer Alzheimer's is drug. No, I, I know nothing about that. Okay, um, they've got one, and there's a lot of controversy over how effective it is. Okay, fifteen bill. Okay, um, there's a lot of controversy over how effective it actually is. Some say it's twenty percent effective. Some say it's forty. Some, oh, okay. Some okay. say it's seven. Whatever yep. it is. But the big thing now is pricing. It just shows. These companies would let their grandmother die to make a buck. They actually say in the article, well, we want $56,000 treatment for this. <coughs> Insurance companies say it won't work. If you were over 20, it's not going to get approved. All right, we'll go to 55000 then. And they already got it figured out how much they're going to make. It would be the second highest grossing drug ever to be produced. Now, that being said, it's a drug that, it's not like uh, the statins or something that works. Yeah. This or is, the polio drug. Or the polio, but that's a perfect one. That, you know, that was Stopped boom. Stopped dead in its yep. This is yeah, yeah. iffy. Maybe help it, maybe it doesn't, maybe, maybe it does. You maybe know. it's 20% efficacy, yep. yeah. But when you looked at it, 85% of the users are going to be Medicare people, which makes sense because they're old, okay? That drug would use up 26% of the Medicare market itself. Isn't that something? That's, uh, that is something. It's five times more costly than the next costliest drug in the Medicare system for something that maybe not work. And that's the reason that your Medicare costs, they showed how much it's going to go up, just because of approving that one drug. And this is a, is a cash cow for them. It's not like we need 55000 to break even. They don't. They need 1000 or 3000 something like that. But it's, I've got you. And, and I have to pay for the years of research we and R&D costs are got to be in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of and course. we have got to recoup those We've costs. We've got to recoup it, but 
the thing is, it's it's like getting a patent on air. Yeah. What what are you going to charge everybody else for the air? Exactly. Um, or you come up with a, a thing to save people that are dying from cancer, for example, yeah. you know, advanced cancer. Well, they're going to pay anything. So do you make a reasonable amount of money on it, or do you make a windfall because you can, even if even if it was so laborious and destructive for the person that has to pay it. They don't care. Uh, it's it's kind of disturbing. Their article was. It is, and, and you know, there's got to be some sort. And this is where the government needs to get involved. Yep. And there's got to be some way out of that. Mm -hmm. Reasonable people can come to reasonable solutions. That's right. But when you're not reasonable, when the government has a position over there and the company has a position over there, and they are light years away from each other, well, you know, not a hell of a lot's going yeah, to happen. get done, yeah, that's right. Um, until the government really decides, mm -hmm. okay, I'm flexing the muscle. And then we open up another can of worms, don't we? Yeah. Well, yeah, we do. We, we've yeah. seen this in the past with different industries. We saw with, so with the airlines. Remember when they used to be in control? Yeah. They, had, they couldn't do anything without right. the government saying they could. Absolutely. And they said, well, we'll behave, we'll behave. Yeah, I did for about 10 years. Hmm. Then they started getting, this one was buying up this one, and this one was buying up this one, and then, are you price fixing tickets? Oh no. Well, how come if I call all eight airlines, they're all, to trip to Cincinnati, everyone's $261.16. You're not getting together, will you? No. Do you know that in Franklin, in the downtown area yep. of Franklin, oh, yeah. uh, there's seven gas stations. <laughs> I own a bunch of stuff down there. And I went around to all seven the other it shows my life is in the toilet. <laughs> Let me guess. Ten. Every one of them was exactly the same. 339.9 a gallon. Yep. Every single one yep. of them. Yep. Gee, price fixing? No. Holy cow! Ah, uh, used to be they'd worry about somebody would come in and they'd be three thirty-five or three thirty-two. Yeah, but no more. They just said, no. Oh, they they they're, they're flaunting it. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like one in the corner goes up to two forty or three forty. So that well, I'll go up to forty. I'll go two forty-one. I'll go two forty-two. They keep on nudging it up instead of yeah, yeah. yeah Amazing. Strange time. Yep. Um, husband charged with misleading police. Are we talking about Anna Walsh here? Yes, we are. Um, Mr. Walsh, if he's, and I'm not saying he's guilty or anything else, but if he actually did it, he's got to be one of the dumbest criminals in the world. There's not too many Mensa members of the criminals. To leave a bloody uh, knife in the basement yeah. with blood on yeah. it and then finding all kinds of other blood evidence and all that kind of stuff. And then go to Walmart and buy all kinds of uh, yeah, whole cleaning people. supplies. Yeah, whole you, people. Yeah. you got cameras everywhere. <laughs> you know, when a wife disappears, the first one, the first one you look at yes. is the husband. Oh, that's and right. I'll be willing to bet you 75 or 80 percent of the time. It's right. It's right. That's right. I'm sure they were watching this dude. Um, and I don't think he's the brightest lad in the world. No, I don't think so either. It, it, uh, they'll, they'll find the body. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, there's probably enough evidence to, at some point in time, charge him. More difficult to One of the him. writers put out an interesting scenario. Not that it's it's not even nice to talk about. What if this was an elaborate scheme to get him out of trouble someplace? But I don't think he's that, that smart to lay that kind of a... No, and I it, don't It's think not like Michael Connolly book, you know? It's yeah. not like that author. He could do that, you know? And she's got so many balls in the yeah. air with a couple of companies she's involved in. Yep. She, she's going to throw all that down the tubes? Uh, I don't know. I... I Believe me, I don't know. But here's something else I know. 
strong opposition voiced to Pine Street Inn project. project yeah. They want to take over the Comfort Inn. I think it's on Morrissey Boulevard. Okay. And they want to put 104 new residential units in for um, affordable uh, housing. Everybody up and down the street, the whole neighborhood is saying, oh, no, no, we don't want them people. Not money. No one, everybody says, we got to cure the homeless problem. But don't bring them here to Norfolk. Nobody will step up, though. No. Or don't bring them to Franklin. Yep. Or don't bring them to Walpole. Because we don't want them. I shouldn't be saying that about Franklin or Walpole. They mean. But nonetheless, it is not in my backyard. Yep. But here's a terrible, terrible story. Dennis Eckersley's daughter. Yeah, I, I, that one surprised me. I just uh, She's a drunny. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And uh, they had a picture of her boyfriend in the paper this mm. morning. Uh, he looks like something that, in his 40s, looks like the biggest bum of the year. Yep. But to have a baby and leave it on the, the floor of a tent naked yeah. uh, that's in sub-freezing temperatures. Yep. I mean, you know there's going to be a special hot seat in hell for him and her. For doing something yep. like that, it, it's it's kind of shocking to us when we see five bill. Okay. When we see celebrities or well-known people, their their offspring or their children are not what we think they should be. You know, you uh, Ramy, his kid. Oh, that, Jerry that, Remy, he, he would, yeah. He was a he's a complete bum. Yeah, he's still in prison. Yeah. But you wouldn't th you would think you look at him and you look at Eckersley and think, oh, that's a kind of a, yeah. a model family. But they they got they got some serious problems too. Drugs. Oh yeah. No no family. That's ties. right. In fact, some of them people have money. Money affluence. They've got access they, to these drugs and, and they. That's right. Yep. That's more right. so than a, than a, that's right. a less. Well, but I got to tell you something. And then she. Told the cops the wrong direction. Yeah. Deliberately. She wanted that baby to die. Of course. Well, you know, she's distraught and that. No. She's a criminal. Oh, yeah. There's no question about it. I don't want to hear any more about it. She belongs yep. in prison. Mm -hmm. Right along with her boyfriend, too. Um, Military eases medical rules amid struggle for recruits. We're lowering the bar to get. Uh, some of it is um, attention deficit disorders, yeah, things of that nature. But if you haven't shown any symptoms for seven years, and I, I, I worry about lowering the bar, but I also worry about the strength of our military. Mm -hmm. And isn't there going to be some time when we're going to have to look at conscription? Sitting here right now, I say, I would, I don't think so. But of course, you know, I've been wrong on a lot of things. The reason I say no is because as we go on, I think automated warfare is going to become more and more and more. Uh, you're going to find drones are going to start taking over more functions that the infantry used to do. You're going to find uh, electronic warfare, uh, things taken out. Lasers. You're going to, yeah, you're going to have to have smarter people, but yeah. I don't think we need as many, for the term, grunts mm. as we did. Um. Well, I tell you what, though, this still... But it won't be eliminated. That's no, for damn sure. That's for damn sure. And they've got to be qualified. Mm -hmm. And we've lost, uh, we've lost the desire to be excellent in yeah. this country. And that's a, that's a point that I think is only coming to roost now in the military. It used to be, if you were in the infantry... Well, that's because you couldn't qualify for anything else, so they just 
stuck you yep. uh, stuck you in the infantry, give you a pair of boots and a rifle, and that's it. Today they're looking for leaders, people that can think, people that do things. It's a whole different different occupation now. Got it. You got to be computer savvy. Yep. Yeah. 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 You you and, yeah. Uh, two bill. Okay. So we will. Um, but I worry about the military because there is so much anti-military bias in yes, this country there is. among the social set, the, yeah. you know, the liberal. And if that's not anti-attitude or bias, it's neutral. Or worse. They don't, yeah, or worse, but they don't, they don't even consider it. It's just, it's just something out there that some people do. They don't think, well, maybe I should at least give it a, give it a look at. Now, I think that's why we should have a mandatory if not military service, a mandatory, say, a year, I don't care the time, six months, a year, two years of, of, of service. Of Absolutely. Some Absolutely. And we could improve this country so much. Well, I don't want little Waldo going. Yeah, you well, know, he's very bad. delicate. And, and Priscilla has got plans to become a interior decorator. And this is going to help things. her plans. Uh, no, I know, but in fact... It might help. If we had two years of national service, that would be two years of college education the government would pay for when they got out. Absolutely. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. Oh, you mean earning money earning yeah. to, to get a college education? That's right. Oh, oh yeah. We, we, we. I like President Biden's plan better if I have it for free. National service, I think, should be just we should follow... We don't have to have 15, 20 years like Switzerland does or right. Israel does, but we should Sweden. have something. Yeah. I mean, these guys go to 18 months, well, the Swedes do, 18 mm -hmm. months active duty, and they take their rifle home and them. their uniforms home. So the Swiss. That's right. And they are maintained. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, Dwayne and I are... Past taking our uniforms home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't put one leg if I had one. I couldn't put one leg in them, I don't think, anymore. I regret getting rid of mine. Uh, my son was so disappointed when he wanted uh, yeah. my... And I, t I tell him, I, I was civilian clothes the whole time. All I had left was a pair of old boots and a couple pair of... Uh, Fatigue pants yeah. that I had for some reason. That's the only thing I had. Uh, he yeah. wanted that field jacket and yeah, stuff. That, yeah, that's uh, right. You, and the they took wanted. that away from me. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it in. I, I had two field jackets. Oh, okay. yeah. And they grabbed them both. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it, but I regret uh, whatever happened to my uh, um, fatigue shirts. Mm -hmm. I like those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Well, listen, old timer, this has been fun. Okay. And what do you say we do it again sometime? I think we should. All right. I got some discussion stuff in here, too. Ah, we, we got to a few things, though. Well, I heard oh. from one of our viewers in Tucson. and they oh, Really? Yeah, they like the show. And I, oh, I got to wish her, uh, Carol Feedy, a oh, speedy recovery. She had a stroke, but she's oh, one, yeah. of our, one of okay. our viewers in Tucson. And then um, I, well I wish her well. Good. Absolutely. Um, and next time, we're going to talk about the Taliban and what they're doing to women. Over Good there. idea. And where is the response from the American people? Why, uh, why aren't the American women madder than hell that this is happening? Why aren't the American Muslim women outraged? Yep. I'm telling you. Well, all right. This was a good show. It was. And folks, behave yourselves. And in two weeks, we'll be back. Think warm. Yeah, right. We, Dwayne and I fought through a snowstorm together. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs>